Welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, we are going to discuss a case about a 69-year-old male who was born to a ER in an unresponsive state. Okay. Sir, uh, should we sir? Initially, uh, on 10 second assessment, the patient was not responding. The patient was unresponsive. And uh, further, the airway was, um, we couldn't assess and um, further we will be thinking most probably the airway will, uh, won't be patent. Uh, but when we uh, connected with the um, um, saturation probe and everything, it was, um, she, he was having a saturation, so mostly airway will be patent. Well, we can't. 100% saturation, even if it is there, we can't say the airway is patent. Saturation has nothing to do with the airway patency. You have to assess the airway. Here the airway is compromised for okay. sure on the way of sensorium, low sensorium. But maybe at the time we are not sure whether it is patent or not. We need to assess the airway. So you need to do your basic airway adjuncts. What are the basic airway adjuncts? Positioning the patient. Maybe needed an esophageal airway insertion. All those things is needed. So and maybe a suction if needed. Lot of secretions. So. Uh, Looking at the saturation, we cannot say a uh, guarantee regarding the patency of airway. Maybe uh, you think there is a patient with laryngeal edema. Right now, he is having 100% saturation. That doesn't mean that his airway is patent. So, you have to, maybe a foreign body would have aspirated. Maybe somewhere on the side, there is an uh, oxygen is getting in and the patient is maintaining saturation. So, airway uh, maintenance, you have to do with the basic airway adjuncts. That is for all the patients. So here he has come with unresponsiveness. So simple thing what we need to do, you go ahead with the BLS algorithm. Check for the response, not responding. Call for help. Simultaneously assess for breathing and look for the pulse. If there is a palpable pulse, you assess him further. If there is no palpable pulse, go ahead with the BLS algorithm. If he is not breathing adequately, do back mass ventilation. So simple. So the BLS algorithm you have done and uh, you found out that he is having a pulse. Right. Then you went ahead with the further evaluation okay. where you felt airway is not maintained at this time, but patency we are not very sure. But you do a basic airway adjuncts at that time. Then go to the breathing assessment where you said air entry is bilaterally equal and uh, the saturation is 100%. Okay. Yeah. And um, uh, <coughs> further uh, with this, uh, BP was maintaining with BP of uh, 140 or 88 mmHg with pulse rate so 83 per minute and all peripheral pulses were palpable. And the GCS wise, as uh, mentioned earlier, his score was uh, e even V1 M1. Okay. Then we uh, again further did the GRBS, which was 28 milligram per deciliter. Okay. So and we are having a patient with hypoglycemia. Uh, we put uh, IV, two IV large bore cannulas were put and uh, one 25 destros was given. How many ml? 100 ml, 25 so destros. What is the uh, recommendation of dextros to be given for this patient? So, uh, this patient... We have different preparation. You have 10% dextrose, you have 25% dextrose, you have 50% dextrose. So, how much, what is the recommendation of uh, blood sugar that you need to give for a patient with uh, uh, hypoglycemia? Uh, for patient with uh, severe hypoglycemia, patient would require 50% dextrose, 100 ml. So, that's what I am asking. My question is, how, how much grams? So, the patient require approximately 25 grams. So, whatever be the preparation that is available with you, you keep in your mind, you need to give at least 25 grams of dextrose immediately. You are having 10% dextrose, so how much ml you need to give? You need to give 250 ml. Suppose you are having 25% dextrose, you need to give 100 ml. Suppose you are having 50% dextrose, you need to give 50 ml. So, that is what you need to keep in your mind. 25 grams of dextrose you need to give. So, as the tonicity increases, there is a chance of irritability, but adult patient you can give. So, that is the thing that you need to remember. So, if the patient is unresponsive, you need to give an IV glucose 25 grams. Simple, you can remember that. Whatever be the preparation that is available, you give 25 grams. Okay, then. So, this patient, uh, we are given 25 uh, grams of dextrose initially and uh, further went ahead with our survey that pupil was, uh, right side pupil was non-reactive whereas the left pupil was sluggish reactive. Okay. And uh, exposure wise was, exposure was done and patient was further uh, covered with to prevent hypothermia. Okay. And uh, further uh, went ahead, we also did a VBG. Mm. VBG was uh, only showing a mild elevation of creatinine of 1.5 with the uh, glucose level of 27 in the VBG. Okay. So, you had a patient who has come brought in unresponsive. You found out that his sugars were low and you administered him dextrose. So, 25 grams of dextrose is the treatment that you wanted. The patient is unable to take IV. Uh, you have you have to go, we are not getting IV access. What are the options? So that if have? patient is not, uh, we are not able to attain an IV access, 
and patient is having a low G, uh, low glucose level we can uh, administer glucagon glucagon can be administered either via subcutaneous im or intranasal also can be so still you just give glucagon and uh, you are happy with the uh, glucagon uh, my question is you are not getting an iv access mm -hmm. you administer glucagon i am not denying the fact you can give glucagon mm -hmm. but after glucagon what will you do next after uh, glucagon uh, we will have to recheck for the uh, glucose level that will patient will obtain it normal by after 10 to 20 minutes ah, 10 to 20 minutes the action of glucagon it is 10 to 20 minutes so it definitely won't replace an IV access that's the thing in your mind if you are delaying something you can give glucagon and meanwhile you have to look for and search for an IV access and put an IV access you need to give IV dextrose so the key message is that IV dextrose is the main treatment for a patient who is having symptomatic hypoglycemia who is drowsy glucagon won't replace it still you can give glucagon but glucagon the problem is it will take 15 minutes 10 to 15 minutes by the time the hypo you, you think you have given glucagon you have given an antidote let the patient improve 20 minutes 30 minutes you are waiting again the all hypoglycemia uh, will damage the brain so you should not wait you search for another iv access and give dextrose so dextrose won't replace glucagon you can think of glucagon yes where else you can give glucagon where else you can you can use glucagon insulinoma where else you can use glucagon beta blocker toxicity so that is another area where you can give glucagon when you have refractory uh, bradycardia due to beta blocker toxicity you can still use glucagon so glucagon im is what is available and even in beta blocker toxicity you can give us an iv infusion protocol is also available so that is regarding your glucagon what are the other drugs that you can give instead of dextrose what are the other agents that you need to think of see a simple it's a simple hypoglycemia so if the patient is diabetic i am happy oh i'm just dealing with a simple hypoglycemia either he has taken a ohs or insulin dose he has skipped his meal so that is the reason why he is developing hypoglycemia i'll get an idea or he's having an underlying ckd or liver disease so okay that will be the reason but an young chap that is coming and he's developing hypoglycemia i'll be more concerned he's not a diabetic you don't have any comorbidities then i should have okay then we should be evaluating him properly so for those group of patient who you think a younger patient who you feel you don't have any comorbidities it's always preferable i am not saying you need to do this it is preferable to draw a sample of serum insulin and c peptide before you administer your dextrose so if possible if possible you feel that it's a young so what i practice when you put an iv access just get two samples Keep it separate apart and then you treat your hypoglycemia and meanwhile you get a history that he is not a diabetic, he is not an any or anything else, then you need to send for a serum insulin level and see peptide. Otherwise after the treatment there is no point in sending and then again we need to wait for the next hypoglycemia event to happen. So what are the other drugs you said regarding glucagon, what else you can opt for? What are the other drugs that you can think of giving in hypoglycemia, refractory hypoglycemia? Steroids, hydrocortisone, especially when you're having adrenal insufficiency also associated with cortisol is also low, adrenal insufficiency, definitely steroids will help. Catecholamine. Then, uh, then. Catecholamine, ad adrenaline. Okay, then. Octreotide. Octreotide, again, when the patient is having a sulfonylurea toxicity, very rarely, but when you are having a sulfonylurea toxicity, if it is refractory to this, just like our upper GA protocol, we can give 50 microgram, but here you need not have give to IV, you can give sub-Q also. So, octreotide is another agent where it is refractory to sulfonylurea toxicity, you can think of giving octreotide also. So, these are the agents that you need to remember. So, now this patient has come to you. Now, the problem, we all of us will know how to correct hypoglycemia. So, the problem next arrives is whom we should admit, whom we can safely send home. That is a big question. So, what are the indications for 1, 2, 3, 4? This patient, you should put them inside. This patient, you can send them home. So, patients can, uh, so the hypoglycemic patients can be divided into uh, non-diabetic and diabetic uh, hypoglycemics. Mm. And in case of non-diabetic uh, hypoglycemic, that is spontaneous hypoglycemia, mostly the patients, um, hypoglycemia can occur due to either because of insulinoma. So, that have, we have to evaluate. So, for that, we have to admit the patient. Or else the patient can be uh, having an infection, sepsis or malaria, which can cause hypoglycemia. For that also admission is needed. Then uh, patient taking on drugs can uh, cause uh, hypoglycemia like quinine can cause hypoglycemia. 
whereas in uh, di- diabetic side. diabetic side patients taking sulfonyl urea these patients are uh, prone to get uh, hypoglycemia and recurrent hypoglycemia can occur so these patients should be observed whereas uh, patients with uh, ckd uh, whereas uh, rice creatinine is there these patients can uh, re- will be reduced clearance of insulin which will in turn uh, cause uh, delayed Um, hypoglycemia also this patient should be admitted CLD chronic CLD liver CLD disease poor gluconeogenesis is affected <laughs> long acting insulin patient on long acting insulins you should better to admit so basically hypoglycemia if it is a diabetic patient you are very sure it is just due to uh, um, actorapid or mixed art maybe a very short acting insulin and the patient is observed for like 3 to 4 hours and is absolutely fine there is no hypoglycemia episode you can send him home organ dysfunction or any evidence of sepsis you need to put them in you need to admit this group of patient that is mandatory spontaneous hypoglycemia irrelevant of whatever be the uh, range of hypoglycemia here you should admit and evaluate that is a protocol you should not send them home and uh, when will you suspect uh, i am telling you somebody has tried to kill this patient by giving insulin so how will you know that this patient have uh, been tried to kill we can uh, uh, as earlier discuss we can get uh, i insulin c peptide levels ah. and c peptide levels will be low in cases when we are if it's an exogenous, exogenous insulin production c peptide, peptide level will be low, low. when will be an endogenous insulin production c, c peptide, peptide level will be high. high so the classical questions that we will get for the entrance and all the patient had uh, serum insulin level elevated but c peptide level low so low c peptide level with serum insulin level high because somebody has injected the insulin so that is the exogenous insulin uh, the patient has been maybe the patient has accidentally taken we don't know or maybe somebody has tried to kill him also is a possibility so that is how you need to uh, do your testing and always remember adrenal insufficiency one of the other common differential diagnosis whenever hypoglycemia either thyroid dysfunctions all other uh, th- abnormalities endocrine abnormalities also you should keep in mind so simple thing don't delay the correction and if at all the patient has been sometimes like 8 hours 10 hours later on the patient was lying down at home and it was a prolonged hypoglycemia so how will you uh, diagnose this so prolonged hypoglycemic event prolonged hypoglycemia will have to uh, check for uh, somayagi and down no no i am not saying that so may again i am telling you the patient was having a prolonged hypoglycemia like he was lying down unconscious in the home for a long time they brought to the ed and you corrected but still the sensorium is not getting improved even after blood sugar being getting corrected that is what prolonged hypoglycemia that's what i meant because hypoglycemia was not identified and patient was lying down home and as a result there is brain damage so you need to do after like 48 hours you need to do an mri and you need to look for t2 flare in density how is the basal ganglia how is the signals in the basal ganglia usually this will be the t2 flare and all there will be hyper intensity so that is a classical mri finding you need to prognosticate to the family right you need to tell them whether he is going to improve or not so basal ganglia how is it is affected how is the images in t2 flare and all you see have to see so not immediately mri won't be helpful maybe after 48 to 72 hours you can take an mri to see how the patient is responding so that is prognosticating aspects then regarding again this patient uh, he was i think he had taken alcohol also. alcohol also so what is the biggest challenge in this patient you are correcting hypoglycemia and he is having another deficiency also probable deficiency also so what you should do thymine also simultaneously thymine also should be corrected so when you have a chronic alcoholic presenting you with hypoglycemia don't jump and correct your hypoglycemia alone correct thymine deficiency then followed by your hypoglycemia correction otherwise what will happen it uh, won't get corrected it will not get it is not getting corrected when you are suddenly giving glucose the vernicke encephalopathy can suddenly get worse and the patient can have further brain damage so always thymine deficiency should be corrected along with hypoglycemia also so that you need to keep in mind so 500 mg of thymine tds you need to add on and immediately you need to give thymine also and this patient we can we discharge him or we need to admit him uh, to admit the patient reasons we reasons we uh, alcoholic patient uh, and also uh, patient had ckd c uh, and also hepatitis c was a known case of hep c also so multiple, multiple issues, issues you need to be admitted alcohol uh, does it increase the sugar or decrease the sugar alcohol increases the sugar oh. but when the patient uh, takes uh, stops drinking of the alcohol it will cause sudden uh, drop in the uh, sugar values okay
so that is again one of the reason uh, when the patient is going for hypoglycemia so alcoholics they will have multiple episode of hypoglycemic episodes so that they are going for a diabetes so that will be that initially and all acarbos was the drug of choice for those group of patients okay so our idea will be you have to correct hypoglycemia as early as possible don't try oral corrections that's one thing if the patient is unconscious he needs iv correction iv correction 25 grams that's what you need to remember whatever solution you have 10 percent 250 ml 25 percent 100 ml 50 percent 50 ml so these are the different formulation that we have and glucagon yes you can give but remember glucagon won't replace your dextrose you have to give dextrose that's the most important thing and other drug like steroids octotide we have said we have to use it in different scenarios okay fine anything else you want to add only the history as such okay fine thank you